Hi everybody, my name is Anne. Thanks for joining me on Art on the Creek. You're always welcome in my home studio in Parker, Colorado, and I really appreciate that you tuned in. Thanks. Hopefully you'll enjoy today's video. We're going to do something a little bit different. I have not yet done a lot of marker art on this channel, so today we're going to pull out the alcohol markers and see what we can come up with. I had a wonderful opportunity to host a plein air session uh, this earlier this week in Arvada, Colorado, and I wanted to share with you some of the photos I took. And let's replicate a horse in alcohol marker. For those of you like me who haven't really used the medium too often, I think I'm kind of figuring it out and I wanted to share it with you. So are you ready to see a horse come to life in alcohol marker? <laughs> Here we go. When I hosted the plein air session this week, I was just so happy that the weather held out. We've had some rain and this was our wonderful view. Listen to these ducks. I thought it was a waterfall the entire time. Uh, here is the landscape that I came up with and I'll go over that one in a different video. Um, I actually didn't film the process, but I had Kathy join me. Thank you so much, Kathy. We both had the same view. We had the little mountain peeking up over the hillside there and we stood under this wonderful willow tree. Look at the size of this thing. Isn't that just terrific? But here's what really stole my heart were these two horses. They were kind of starting to nap under the shade of a big cottonwood tree just across the way and they were close to the fence so I thought why not let's go over and take their picture and we did and they were so kind and so gentle. Um, I decided to go ahead and draw her out on this uh, B marker paper. I'm really liking this paper for markers. If, if you haven't tried it yet, it's their marker sketchbook and I really like it. It's very smooth. It feels like a Bristol. Um, the ink does show through, but it doesn't go to the next page. I've been real careful to put, uh, you know, something in between so it doesn't ruin the next page, but I have had extremely little bleed through as far as uh, landing on the next page. Now what I'm doing to get the, the lines in here so that I can erase my pencil lines, this is a Chameleon Art Changing Color uh, Fine Liner. It's water-based, but it's, uh, it's fixed when it's dry. So I thought it would be just fine to use these with the alcohol marker, and it was. And besides, it's, it's quite sheer. So um, as far as the Chameleon aspect of it goes, I haven't really looked into these to see how you can make them change color um, with the bigger Chameleon pencils it has to do with uh, or markers it has to do with changing out the nib ink or turning it around they can, you kind of put them together and then you have two inks in one I don't know if you're familiar with those or not I don't have any to show you but as for a fine liner I like this one it's a little triangular shape um, I got it in a little set with I think an art kit so um, I'm sorry I don't have any more information on this particular item right here but I'm just going to trace over my lines the lines that I want to keep and then I will go through and erase my pencil now I will be the first one to tell you I don't draw horses that often. I do draw a lot of animals and um, I'm just not all that familiar with the musculature of a horse. I have ridden them. I love them. I've petted them. <laughs> um, but I really just am not all that familiar with the muscles. And when you get to looking at them, they can kind of get overwhelming. There's an awful lot of detail and musculature that you could put in there. And they're so lean that sometimes their skeleton shows through as well. And this horse actually had a little bit of dapple on the sides of her stomach. So I tried to figure out what kind of breed she was, but I really don't know um, other than gentle and kind and wonderful. So I'm first going in here with one of the yellows and I will list here um, for you at the, at the end all of the color names and I'll also put them in the description in case you have the desire to try these out or maybe translate these colors. I'm pretty sure that these color names are, are kind of universal across the board. It, it, maybe not with Copic, Copic but with uh, some of these other uh, markers. The, I used uh, these Cali Art markers for everything except for I did have one Sketch Marker Brush Pro that I added into it. It just had the, the exact right shade of, of brown. This set of Cali Art Markers, it's a set of 121. The 121st item is the, the Zero Marker, the Blender. 
I don't really use those alcohol blenders too much. I like to blend with another marker. Um, and I'm going in first here and getting all of the, the shadows in, but I'm doing that with the lightest shade. So this is number uh, color number Y710, which is kind of like a, it looks like buff titanium actually. And um, yeah, it was just, it was really easy to do. I, the markers just glide across this paper and uh, I had no trouble, like I said, blending them. I'm just a little bit unfamiliar with all of the properties of markers and I've been trying to do a little bit more. There was, there is uh, right now going on in September, um, it's called X-Tember, 30 days of X-Men. So 30 X-Men in 30 days. I love a good challenge. You know me, I started my <laughs> Major League Baseball mascot painting challenge and I got stuck. I've got one week left to do and I had to postpone it. I, I, this week has just been insane. Busy, busy, busy. So I had to move that to next Friday. So that's what we'll be doing next Friday. But for today, I wanted to show you this because I realized we haven't really done anything, particularly Colorado, in quite a while. Um, so these horses are definitely quintessential Colorado and uh, particularly next to the cottonwood. Uh, cottonwood trees are prolific in our state. And in fact, I think they've made it so that um, you can't plant them anymore because when they release their cotton in some areas, it's just like it has snowed on the ground. It's just so floofy <laughs> and it can get on the roads and cause some problems. But um, cottonwood is really synonymous with uh, the West and I really just love it. So I wanted to put a little bit of cottonwood tree in here and that will come at the end. But first of all, I kind of want to ask you guys a question and I really would appreciate your feedback in the comments on this video. Now, many of you know, or if you don't know already, I have opened memberships to my channel. So what that means is I have bonus content. I have things that, uh, tutorials and reviews that I don't share with the general public. And I do share with you if you're a member. Um, many other artists on YouTube have a Patreon. This is exactly the same thing. But instead of being a patron over on Patreon, your patronage with Art on the Creek will be right here on YouTube. And it's still a secure, exclusive platform. Uh, you'll be able to have access to all kinds of really fun things. I'll let you click on the link in the description so that you can read about it. But for instance, if you wanted a full-length tutorial of something like this, that would be available as a member. So one of these things that I wanted to ask you about is about memberships. Is it something that you would prefer to be able to do right here on YouTube so you don't have to load another app on your phone or try and figure out another platform? Um, you're already here on YouTube, so you would just get notified when the extra content becomes available. Or do you prefer to really do that over on a platform like Patreon? I'm still trying to kind of navigate my way through this membership option here. And um, as much as I wholeheartedly appreciate all of your comments and feedback and you know i i couldn't do it without you you guys are the backbone of art on the creek now don't worry at all you're not going to lose anything by uh, not becoming a member what i'm doing is i've got to reduce the number of videos that i create each week it's just taking too much of a demand on my time between the editing and planning and creating a an, an arc that has a good lesson for you guys um, or a review for that matter. It really just takes a lot of time to edit and put everything together in a quality fashion. And I do want you guys to have quality videos. I do want you to enjoy what you see and I want you to share my channel and come back. And I have so enjoyed all of your comments. That's my absolute favorite thing about this channel is working with you, talking with you. It really makes this feel like it's a live active classroom. And I'm so thrilled to hear when you guys have tried something that I've demonstrated and you enjoyed it or you shared it with your friend or you got together as a group and you painted something. That makes my heart explode with joy. I, you know, as a teacher, this is something, this is the reason that we go into this profession is to bring knowledge to other people. And I've so enjoyed doing that here with you and I will continue to do that. So no worries if you, if a membership isn't right for you or a super thanks, I know that's kind of a weird name, but what it, what it means is um, a one-time donation or one-time gift. And there's a button for that too on the bottom of the video if you wanted to, to do that way. It's kind of like a tip jar. <laughs> um, but you know what, all of this, all of this attention 
to to art education really does cost money. It's just like your uh, your school system. Those, all those classrooms need to be funded, and this this classroom right here also needs to be funded. But what I'm going to do for those of you who really want to participate in that level of of classroom is really create the lessons for you. What do you want to see? Um, if you have a specific request about a specific medium or about a specific subject matter, I'm on it. I will do that for you. If you want a specific item reviewed, I will do it for my members. This is the extra kind of attention that you will get. Um, in addition to priority response to your questions uh, and, and comments, everything that you want Art on the Creek to be, I will do my best to make it that way if it's within my power. So thank you so much for listening to that little spiel. Um, and yeah, if you have an opinion about whether or not you would prefer to have that sort of intimate one-on-one -on -one, uh, interaction with me as an artist and your instructor over on Patreon, if you'd prefer to do it there, or if you prefer to do it right here on YouTube, let me know. I just thought that uh, it would be really easy to do right here on YouTube because we're here anyway, so we might as well use the tools that are right in front of us. Now I'm just going in with her muzzle and going in with some of the warm grays. You know, warm gray markers are one of my favorites because they can be used for uh, any kind of sk uh, human skin. Any port I was going to say portraiture, but you kind of don't really think of portraiture when you're doing markers. But if you're drawing people um, or characters, that, that shadow under the chin, a warm gray works really well a lot of the time. Sometimes they lend toward a pink or a purple with that warmth in there, and it just really is so nice, uh, depending upon the colors that are underneath the skin tone. Now, right there along the jawline, you see I went in with a warm gray five, I think, and it was a little too dark, but if you go in right away and blend over it, I was able to soften that so well. I really like these markers, and I, I have a feeling, because I've used Copics, I've used just about every marker out there, they're kind of all the same. Oosh. I, I mean, I hope I'm not stepping on anybody's toes, but I think the real difference is in the nib quality. And if you can find one's, one brand that is a standard sized nib, because you can replace the nibs and you can buy ink refills. And now Ohuhu has ink refills. And if the color numbers are pretty standard or you can find something that's really close, you know, why invest the money? Copics are like over $5 a marker and these work out to be so much less. I will, um, I'll put up in the text here on the bottom of uh, your screen what the price is because I don't have that information right in front of me right now, but I'll definitely put it up here on the text. And now when I'm working on the main, I kind of uh, just went in with the lighter yellows and then I realized I wanted to put some more in. So you'll see the, the little changes I made at the end there. Um, not crazy about that, but you know what? Hair is not my favorite thing to draw. I love drawing it in colored pencil. Absolutely love drawing hair in colored pencil. But if you put a marker in my hand or a paintbrush, I, for some reason, I, I just get, I panic. <laughs> So at the very end here, you'll kind of see what we did, what I did with, uh, with her mane and tail. And hopefully it came out uh, pretty good. I'm going in here first for the highlight on the eye with a little bit of blue gray. And I think this is an 003. Yeah, I thought the 01 would be too light. Um, this is the, sorry, just a, just a single O, the blue gray 03. And so that's why she looks like she's got cataracts at the moment. <laughs> And then I'll go in with, uh, with the warm gray nine. Um, I don't like using black. I like using layers to get my darks going as much as I can or um, building them up to make the darks. And then I got that little vein under her eye just a little bit too dark. So once again, going in and blending everything out with a lighter shade works really well. And I think she looks really soft. I like the look of markers. I like the way that they really just lend to um, kind of a sheen and but yet they're still really soft so i don't know i just think marker art is really quite fun now right here what i'm doing is i've gone back to that fine liner the chameleon fine liner and i'm just kind of sketching in some cottonwood leaves i really don't have a plan for this part i just wanted to give myself a reminder of this day so when i create art I do it for me and what I do is I like to create a memory of the experience that I had that gave me the idea to paint this this subject so for me I want to remember that this horse was here next to the cottonwood trees so what I'm doing is I sketched in a few cottonwood leaves like a spray of, of leaves and then I'm going to go over it in different layers of green 
to show that they are cottonwood leaves. And then I'll just kind of sketch a little tree in behind it. Cottonwood uh, trees have really interesting bark. Um, you know, it's funny because cottonwood trees are, every one that I think of is just ancient. I mean, literally probably at least a hundred years old. And I know that's not ancient, but as far as a tree, I, I think that's pretty darn impressive if you can be around for a hundred years without getting blown over by the wind. Um, in Colorado, cottonwood trees tend to grow by water. So in fact, when the, uh, when the, the people in the, the covered wagons ventured west, they followed uh, the rivers and um, they looked for cottonwood trees because they knew that that would be a source of water and they would be able to survive um, if they could camp next to or build a home next to or uh, nearby those cottonwood trees. So they, they really do signify for me uh, a little bit of survival in the west. The wood of the cottonwood tree is um, used to make a lot of really neat western style furniture and um, it's also a really good wood to burn uh, if you have a wood burning stove or if you like uh, fireplaces so yeah i really had fun doing this i just put that little spray of leaves in there and now i'm going in with a few different layers of browns just really making this really sketchy i just wanted to give the horse some context um, you know nothing nothing special here just uh, just kind of doodling at this point I just really like the way that the horse came out and uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun working with these markers. So here's the tail end of the detail that I put in on the cottonwood leaves and honestly, it is not a lot of detail. I'm just sketching. I'm just having fun at this point. And that really is one of the things about markers that I kind of like is that they are so fun because they're so blendable. As long as you color over whatever it is that you've just put down while it's still wet, you can really get some wonderful soft blends with it. So here it is as a finished piece. And you can kind of see how I went in and added a little bit of shading on the main. Uh, let me do a freeze frame here on the color swatch so you can see this range. There we go. I think there's a fair number of skin tones, really good range of reds, purples, blues, greens, yellows. Like I said, they segue into those sunset oranges and then all three uh, types of gray. Really a decent range. And now here's another freeze frame for you. If I counted correctly, I used 17 markers in this plus the two uh, fine liners. Really had a great range and I felt like I had everything I needed to, to draw the horse. Now this is this shot here is before I went in and adjusted the main. But I like this set and it's a decent price. Like I said, again, I will go ahead and uh, put that in the bottom. I'll put it right here too so that you can see that. But as far as a budget marker goes, that's got a decent range. I think these Cali art markers are great. Uh, they're fun. They do the trick. What more do you want? I think that these are a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today and have a fun, artful weekend planned. Have a great Friday, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye now.